One of the crazes this semester has been the Winthrop Crush page on Twitter. Lauren McCoy told us all about it. Do you want to tell the boy in your class how you really feel? Or compliment the girl you see in the gym every day? Well, here's your chance. Woo Crushes is a Twitter account that tweets what is sent to them. Some followers tell us more. Anonymously, people can post who they have feelings for or who they are attracted to and what they find attractive about their peers here at Winthrop. So, you know, I mean, it's, I see it nothing as harmless fun. I, think it was, I thought it was funny. I mean, other schools have one. We, we're starting to act like a real school. It's been a bit of good fun. It's hilarious. I mean, it's probably done by people like just seems like just girls do it for their friends, stuff like that. It's not that serious. It's pretty funny. It's a good time. You know, I made it on there once. I was pretty flattered. Woo Crushes might have taken a short break, but they're back in tweeting again. Follow at Woo Crushes and tweet about your crush. I'm Lauren McCoy reporting for Winthrop Close Up. The page was deleted, but it's currently back up, so you can still tell Winthrop who your crush is. Now we're going to check in with Meg for our Twitter update. Meg? So I've been checking Twitter. A lot of people have been tweeting in, totally. but nobody wants to tell us who their Winthrop crushes are. But luckily, we still have two more questions, so people can tell us who their favorite athletes are and what their favorite places to thrift. So hopefully I'll have a little bit more for you guys soon. Replacing your old and worn out clothes can get really expensive, especially for college students. I told you about one organization that was more than happy to help us spruce up our wardrobes. Winthrop Student Alumni Council recently held a t-shirt swap to help promote school spirit at the university. Anyone sporting a top from another college was encouraged to exchange it for a shirt with the Winthrop logo instead. People were glad to give up their worn out clothes and SAC used the event to draw in the local community as well. It came because we often see a lot of our students wearing um, universities that don't, they don't even attend, so anything from USC to Clemson. So this is just a great way to get some woo pride on our campus. Nearly 200 shirts were given out between three stations set up around the campus. The group hopes that the design will inspire more participation and spirit days such as Garden and Gold Friday. Scannable codes on the back of each shirt gave more information on the organization as well as other ways to show your school spirit. Students here, uh, they typically wear things from another school, um, not in like a wrongdoing, but at the same time it's like, oh, you know, I'm a student here at Winthrop and I should show that, you know, I'm actually happy about being a student. SAC is still encouraging students to keep digging through their closets and giving back to those in need. Chelsea Vacari tells us how a certain form of self-expression can cause serious health problems if not done correctly. Tattoos have become more and more popular over the years. These days, it isn't uncommon to see people with tattoos all over their bodies, but this form of artistic expression can create some harsh problems for those who decide to let people who aren't licensed put ink in their skin. Uh, I got four done in a house, and I've gotten ten in a shop. The city of Rock Hill is not yet zoned for tattooing, but that doesn't mean there aren't safe places to get a great piece of artwork put on you close by. Charlotte has been zoned for tattooing for years. There are many shops and professionals who know how to avoid spreading diseases and infecting clients. The differences are very obvious. Um, the ones I've gotten in in the house uh, didn't heal correctly, or the ink that they used were was awful, pretty much. But the ink that they use in like normal shops, the tattoo artists that I use or that I go to normally is uh, their ink is awesome. Tattooing can be a wonderful form of self-expression, but be sure to do it in a professional environment where the tattooists are licensed. This is Chelsea Vicari reporting for Winthrop Close-Up. You can avoid bad artwork and infection by visiting one of the many tattoo shops in Charlotte. Dimitri, are there any students in the crowd with interesting tattoos? Thanks, Zoe. We have two guests with us today, and they have some interesting tattoos. Tell me your name. David Kizzy. And can you tell me the tattoo that you have? Okay, um, I have a leopard tattoo on my shoulder, and it basically represents me and my sister, because 
I've, I feel like I'm the leopard and she's a cheetah and far away they look the same but when you get up close they're actually different so it represents my sister and I. And can you tell me your name? My name is Earl Martin. And can you tell me the tattoo that you have? Well I have three but this one on my arm is Loyete in French and it's just a bond between me and my best friend Chelsea that we got when we were 18 and it just shows our love for the French um, culture and just our loyalty to each other. Pretty cool ink they have. We'll be back with Close Up Live in a short break. Welcome back. So we're checking in with Twitter again because we asked you guys to tell us who your favorite athletes are. So, so far we have Ryan Loxy and Apollo Ono. And as far as our Winthrop Eagles, we have Andre Smith and Tiffany Charles. So now I'm going to just go ahead and pitch it on over to Chelsea Brown in sports. Thanks, Meg. Welcome back to Winthrop Close Up where we bring you our sports news live. I'm Chelsea Brown with some of the best sports stories of the school year. Winthrop challenges students outside of the classroom. Reporter Stephanie Harris shows us how to get active on the ropes course. Around the corner for anyone and everyone on Winthrop's campus. The Outdoor Education Center ropes course contains elements that are perfect for sports teams, organizations, and even executive boards to not only have a great time, but to experience some challenges that they may face day to day. Whether we're doing low ropes, team building, the high ropes course after any type of challenge, we're going to stop. We're going to reflect on that challenge with the group. We're going to ask questions. And then after we do that, we're going to try and make some connections between what just happened and their real world environment. The ropes course instructor's key philosophy is challenge by choice, meaning that those at the course are not going to be forced to face the challenges, but are given the opportunity to participate and step outside what they normally would shy away from. With all the groups that come out here, you've got to get outside your comfort zones. Um, you'll learn more about yourself, you'll learn more about other people, and you'll find that it's fun. Tomorrow's hopes for those who come out to the course is that they walk away with an experience that they can relate directly back to everyday life obstacles. Come join not only a fun, but an educational adventure here on Winthrop's campus. I'm Stephanie Harris reporting for Winthrop Close Up. Maro says if you plan on heading out to the ropes course, remember this quote. All growth in life involves taking risks and getting out of your own comfort zones. From balancing on a rope to balancing on others, reporter Crystal Booker takes a look at the Spirit Squad. Composed of dancers and cheerleaders, the Winthrop Spirit Squad works hard to increase the morale of Winthrop's basketball team and their fans. After a two-year hiatus with only a dance team and no cheerleaders, the squad has brought them back. Cheerleaders view the return of the team as a chance to create a positive image on campus. Because I've cheered for most of my life and they're just now bringing the program back and I wanted to help build something that will potentially grow into something great and that made me feel proud to be a part of something like that. In the future, the team will be participating in competition cheerleading in addition to cheering at the home games. Although the cheerleaders do not travel with the basketball team, they make sure their voices are heard throughout the arena during games at home. They aren't just encouraging the players on the court, but the community as well. I didn't expect to have to go on appearances outside of Winthrop University visiting elementary schools and things like that. It's meeting all of the little girls that come up to us saying that we inspire them and just helping them to grow into nice young women. Winthrop cheerleaders thrive in the family atmosphere created by the squad and are looking forward to the upcoming tryout scheduled to be held on April 20th and 21st. If you're interested in being a part of the team, visit WinthropEagles.com for more information on how you can bring spirit to the woo. I'm Crystal Booker, reporting for Winthrop Close Up. We are glad that the cheerleaders are back and want to thank them for helping us keep the school spirit up. Cheerleaders are not the only people who get hyped up. Reporter Dimitri Williams shows us how to go and box inside of a ring. Winthrop's Boxing Club combines many styles of fighting, stresses fitness, and fun. Each session begins with 15 minutes of cardio before the members begin working on style and technique. Well, we work on offense, defenses. There's four basic punches, the jab, the right hand, the uppercut, and a hook. Um, and then we work on uh, defensive techniques, which are slipping, catching, uh, catching punches, shooting over, and then bobbing and weaving. Besides the weekly practices, the Winter Boxing Club has had the opportunity to practice what they have learned at the Atlantic Corporate Fight Night Charity Show. But technique and proper protection is not all that is needed to endure a fight. 
The most important thing about boxing is it requires a lot of work ethic in the gym and a lot of physical endurance and diligence. So um, I think the main part is um, being able to last through the workout. Surviving the workout will help the members both in and out of the ring. Although a defensive technique, students can work out and have fun with the sport of boxing. With photographer Javion Garrett, I'm Demetri Williams reporting for Winthrop Close Up. If you are interested with sparring with the boxing club, they meet every Tuesday and Thursday in room 206 of the West Center. You don't have to be in the ring to fight. Different sports, they always call for different measures. Dimitri Williams is going to show us how one track athlete outruns the competition. Senior hurdles and sprint athlete Sharon Honor has proven to be a fierce swift competitor when on the track. She recently won first place in the 60-meter hurdles and second place in the 200-meter dash at the Liberty University Indoor Track Meet. Arna competed unattached in the 2013 with the track and field invitational. Although placed first in the prelims, Arna came up short in the finals, placing second in the 100-meter hurdles and third in the 200-meter dash. Of course, no one likes to lose or be less than first place, but in track, you win some, you lose some. So it's a humbling experience. Honor was clocked in 14.19 seconds to place second in the 100 meter hurdles and 24.66 seconds for third place in the 200 meter dash. She has high hopes for future competitions. I definitely want to be ranked among the top in my conference. I want to make it to regionals, make it to nationals, so I can run against people all over the country. Honor has competed for Winter for four years and has proven her place as one of the top runners. Sharon Honor has captured top performances from hurdles to sprints, and we look forward to her sprinting fast future competitions. I'm Demetri Williams reporting for Winter Close Up. To keep up with Sharon and other top performing athletes, make sure to visit the athletics page at WinthropAthletics.com. Playing sports isn't the only difficulty that athletes face throughout the school year. One baseball player has fought diversity his whole life. Zoe Iriziri introduces us to this remarkable young man. As the temperatures are getting warmer, baseball season is beginning. This year, Winthrop Baseball has something unique, an outfielder who's partially deaf. I'm like 96%, 97% deaf. Looking at him, you'd never know. He's developed a skill that allows him to have regular conversations. But I can read lips really well, so that's how I know what he's saying. Conversing is one thing, but things like listening to the radio are very different for Patrick. What I hear in music is I hear like people talking, singing, but I don't hear, I don't know what they're saying unless I look up the lyrics and they kind of put it together. But I just basically listen to the beat of it and the rhythm of it. He said he prefers upbeat music. I don't like listening to sad music because I'm not that kind of guy. I'm always a happy guy. And I don't like, I've never been that guy like, oh, my girlfriend broke up with me and all that stuff. Nah. He listens to music to pump him up before a game. Patrick has been playing baseball since he could walk. And while some might think being a deaf baseball player is hard, for Patrick, it's just part of who he is. For me, it's something I've done my whole life. And, like, it's just it's nothing different for me. Patrick's father instilled a positive attitude in him, and he's determined to achieve all his goals. People think that me being deaf is that it's going to bring me down. But I always try to work my way up and try to be better than everybody else. Talking with him, he had such a great attitude, and I know that we can only expect great things from him in the future. With photographer Sheila Straub, this is Zoe Irizarry reporting for Winthrop Close Up. To keep up with Michael Patrick on the field, make sure to check out the Winthrop Athletics page and keep up with baseball. Well, that's all we have for your sports update, showing you some of the best stories of the semester. We'll see you again in August with news on your Eagle athletes. We're going to take a short break, but, we'll, but when we come back, we will have Crystal with Arts and Entertainment.